you may be upset with me when you see what I do with this thrift store frame tapestry. And you may think that I ruin these vintage brass plates. But I think you'll like what I make with this old CD storage box to surprise my husband. These picture frames will be unrecognizable when I'm done. And you won't believe what I do with this old spoon rack. I'll be using all of these faux flowers in today's thrift flips. In fact, I'll be upcycling and repurposing over 15 recent thrift store finds. So, if you're ready for some insanely unique DIY ideas, let's get started. I've had this idea in my head for a while, so when I spotted these brass plates for $1.50 each, I decided to give it a try. I know some of you are horrified that I flattened out the design in the center of each plate with a rubber mallet. I just wanted the shape of the ship design to be less obvious. Next, I mixed up a 50-50 mixture of baking soda and ivory chalk paint to create a thick textured paint that I brushed on over the center design. While the paint mixture was drying, I pulled apart the layers of a decorative napkin, keeping just the top patterned ply. Then I cut around the designs that I wanted to use. I brushed Mod Podge over the dry paint and carefully placed my napkin design on top, using my paintbrush to smooth out the napkin and remove any wrinkles. Then I applied a coat of Mod Podge over the top to seal and protect the napkin. If you want, you can also add some additional small pieces to dress up your design. Wipe away any Mod Podge that gets on the outer rim before it has a chance to dry. Once the Mod Podge is completely dry, use fine grit sandpaper to remove any napkin pieces that extend beyond the inner circle. If there are any tears in your napkin, like I found in the Bluebird, you can cut out that section from another napkin and decoupage it right over the damaged area. So, let me know, do you think I ruined these brass plates? When I bought this spoon rack, I had no idea what I would do with it, but I just love little drawers, so for $2, I grabbed it. Once I came up with an idea, I knew I needed to paint the back wall with a neutral colored chalk paint. Once the paint was dry, I lightly sanded over it to give it a smoother texture. Then I applied a rub-on transfer with typography from IOD's Brocant package. Transfers adhere easily to smooth, freshly painted wood. If you like a more aged look, you can lightly sand over your transfers to distress them. After sanding, I applied some clear wax over the painted areas to seal the chalk paint. The transfer is the French word for herbalist, so now I needed to add some herbs. But, since I didn't have any, I used dried flowers instead. I just used some twine to tie together little bundles and hung them upside down in the slots. I think this is so much cuter than hanging spoons, don't you? Are you tired of the same old boring snacks? Well, let me tell you about my new snack obsession. 
You've heard me talk about the amazing nuts from nuts.com, but today I want to tell you about their specialty snacks. Nuts.com sources their products from growers around the world, so everything is super fresh and flavorful. If you've never tried nuts.com, I would suggest starting with the Snacky Sampler, which comes with a huge variety of their most popular healthy snacks like vanilla light and crunchy granola, Asian snack mix, and extreme trail mix. But my absolute favorite is the half popped popcorn. This is so crunchy and delicious and popcorn is naturally low calorie. So I am absolutely addicted. In fact, <laughs> I had to control myself so that I would at least have a little bit left to show you today. Mm. Yeah, this will for sure be gone by the end of the day. Right now is a great time to check out all the delicious options at nuts.com. Just use the link in the description box, nuts.com slash Canterbury, and new customers will receive a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more. And if you like popcorn, you really have got to try this half popped popcorn. Mm. That's, mm, mm. That's nuts.com slash Canterbury. For this next project, I'm going to use this old CD storage box. I see these at the thrift store all the time. Since I'm going to turn it on its side, I knocked off the little wooden feet and then I filled the holes left behind with some wood filler. Next, I used a little pry bar and a screwdriver to pop off the plastic dividers on the inside. The wood was really red, so I gave it two coats of a light green chalk paint on the outside and the inside. When the wood filler was dry, I sanded those spots smooth and painted that side with the same green paint. When the second coat of paint was dry, I sanded over the box, lightly distressing the edges. To cover the open picture frame hole, I traced around the box onto a piece of thin cardboard, cut it out, and adhered it to the box with spray adhesive. This will now be the bottom of the box. Next, I cut out a piece of foam board to cover the inside bottom of the box. I wanted to attach this small cottagey print that I had thrifted and decided to use Velcro to attach it. That way I can easily change out the picture whenever I like. I intentionally attached it at a slight angle. I waited until I was done to apply clear wax to the box because I didn't want the wax to keep the Velcro from sticking properly. I'm putting a phone charger inside, so I drilled a small hole for the cord. I came across this vintage hook for a dollar and thought I could use it in the bathroom, but I didn't want to attach it directly to the drywall. So I hunted around and decided to attach it to the base of this table pedestal that I previously thrifted for $5. I removed the pedestal and set it aside for a future project. And then I removed three wood squares from the base, one screw to the top center and two on the underside. I did this to make the wood piece a little less bulky. To hang it, I attached two D-rings on the back side where they wouldn't be seen. Before attaching the hook to the front side, I decided to give the wood a good cleaning with Restore a Finish and some very fine steel wool. This removes grime and helps to eliminate small scratches. 
When I got ready to attach the hook, I changed my mind. I felt that it just stuck out too far. So instead, I attached a smaller decorative hook from Dollar Tree. To make it pop against the dark wood, I rubbed it down with some antique gold rub and buff. Then I touched up the screws with a bit of rub and buff to make them less noticeable. I added the vintage hook to my stash and was taking the three wood squares to the garage when an idea popped in my head. I pulled out the IOD traditional pots rub on transfers and cut out three small white transfers. There was dried glue and chippy varnish on the wood squares, so I wasn't sure if the transfers would adhere or not. About three-fourths of the first one adhered, so I tried sanding the second square before applying the transfer, but even less of that transfer adhered. I went ahead and sanded the third square, and this time it completely adhered, so then I had to distress it with sandpaper to make it look more like the other two. To hang them, I added some sawtooth hangers on the back. I absolutely love these. I think they look like some kind of significant architectural salvage. But let me know what you think. Would you hang these in your home? I'll be honest, it's getting increasingly difficult to find things I like at the thrift store. I do like bird cages, but this one seemed small and overpriced. So my goal with this project was to make it look authentically vintage and more substantial. To build up the base, I found an old metal cash box in my stash that was similar in color and shape to the bird cage. I wanted to use the box upside down, so I hot glued the lid closed. I thought about using a mending plate or some kind of bracket to attach the birdcage to the box, but it just seemed much easier to use a strong adhesive like E6000. I weighted down the birdcage with some small paint cans and let the E6000 dry overnight. The next day, the two pieces were firmly joined together. I felt the gold highlights on the cage made it look cheap and fake, so I lightly brushed black chalk paint over most of it, which I felt made it look more genuinely vintage. I hunted through my container of small metal embellishments and found some decorative corner pieces that I think are meant to hold photos in an old-fashioned album, but I attached them to the corners with super glue to dress up the cash box. I also used super glue to attach a label holder that came off of a Dollar Tree box. Finally, I staged it with some of my other thrifted finds. How cute is this old candle box? I love the aged white paint, so I'm just going to give it a good cleaning. Instead of applying a permanent design to the front of the box, I decided to attach a clip with a small screw. However, I did apply a rub-on transfer to the top portion. It's a poem from IOD's Lover of Flowers package. And then I distress the typography to match the age of the painted wood. I love that I can easily change out the artwork on the front. Finally, I added some of the inexpensive faux flowers that I had thrifted.
I think these picture frames originally came from Hobby Lobby, but now I frequently see them at thrift stores. I lightly sanded over the designs to create a smooth, even surface for the paint. I didn't want to use the glass, but the paint was glued into the black frame. However, it came out easily with a couple of taps with a hammer. I wanted a neutral background that wasn't white, so I painted both frames with a light gray chalk paint. I wanted the frames to look like a set, so I found a wood frame in my stash to go around the photo opening on the black frame, similar to the one on the other frame, and I just attached it with wood glue. I weighed it down with some paint cans and let the glue dry for a few hours. Then I painted the frame gray to match. You know, I'm not a huge fan of gray paint, but I thought it would be a good backdrop for these floral paint inlays. I trimmed the edges and planned the layout of the inlays. Then I brushed on another coat of chalk paint and misted the unpainted side of the inlays with water. I immediately placed the damp inlay paint side down on the gray paint. I misted it a bit more and rolled over it with a brayer. I repeated this process for the remaining section of the frame. Then I set it aside to dry while I applied a coordinating paint inlay to the second frame. Let the inlays thoroughly dry. Then to remove the paper, mist it with water, let it sit for 30 seconds, and then carefully peel off the paper. Set the paper in a spot to dry because you can reuse them one or two more times. For a distressed look, I sanded over the frame edges. Then to highlight the solid gray areas, I applied white wax to the inner frame and to the frame edges, dabbing off the excess with a cloth. Now to add the artwork. I'm going to use this $5 tapestry. I cut off the paper from the back of the frame and removed the fabric, which unfortunately had been glued to a piece of cardboard. Now brace yourself because I cut up the tapestry into two small sections to fit into my frames. I cut a rectangle slightly larger than the frame backing, folded the edges over to the back side, and hot glued them in place. Then I returned them to the frames. I didn't get it on camera, but I also cleaned up the back side of both frames with brown paper packing tape. You'll have to let me know if you think I ruined the tapestry, or if, like me, you think these frames make the tapestry pieces seem even more special. You know, I love blue and white china, so I couldn't pass up this little chinoiserie riser. I thought it was the perfect size for a small lamp. I had previously thrifted this light attached to a clip and decided to take it apart. I used a screwdriver to loosen up the outer shell from the bottom cap. Then I slid off the outer shell and the insulating sleeve. Next, I loosened up the screws holding the wires to the socket. I used a piece of tape to help me remember which wire went to which screw. The hole on the top wasn't quite large enough, so I had to use a drill bit for ceramics to make it larger, and I didn't have the drill bit size that I needed, and as a result, I caused a small piece to break off next to the hole. The riser had a rubber plug on the bottom, which I popped off. I slipped a washer and nut from the clip onto the cord and then ran the cord through one of the holes on the side of the riser and then up through the socket cap. 
I wrapped the wires around the screws and tightened them. Finally, I covered the socket with the insulating sleeve and outer shell and snapped the shell back into the socket cap. I hadn't realized that the lamp socket off the clip was for an oddly sized tube light bulb, so I switched it out with a chandelier socket that I had in my stash, following the same steps. This time, I added a washer directly under the socket cap to cover the broken piece. When I first saw this vase at Goodwill, I thought it was metal, but up close, I realized it was just resin. So I decided to make it look like rusty iron by using Modern Masters metal effects. I brushed on two coats of the brown primer. When the second coat was dry, I brushed on two coats of the iron paint. And finally, I sprayed on the rust activator waited five minutes and sprayed on a second coat of the rust activator. I bought this metal effects kit a couple of years ago for $20 and I have used it on several projects during that time. It creates a unique effect that just can't be duplicated with paint alone. I wanted to stage the rusty vase with the rusty looking roses from the thrift store. I paid $2 for the entire bunch. I tore it into individual stems and then cut off any damaged parts. I also wanted to use the bird lid. I unscrewed the bird and metal leaves, turned the lid upside down, and filled it with styrofoam. I hot glued some Spanish moss over the styrofoam and then stuck the metal leaves and bird on top. I loved the crackly look of this little ceramic plaque, but I thought I could make it extra special. I pulled out an 8x10 gold frame from my stash that was missing its glass, which was perfect. I had a small piece of velvet fabric left over from reupholstering Madison's kitchen chairs. I cut the velvet to fit around the frame's cardboard backing. The cardboard was pretty thin, so I decided to cut out a new piece of sturdier cardboard. I wrapped the fabric around the cardboard and hot glued the edges to the back side. Then I marked the center of the fabric and hot glued the plaque to the velvet. I put it back into the frame and added the original cardboard on the back side and finally added some paper tape to clean up the edges. I needed to adjust the picture wire to a horizontal orientation. After removing the eye hooks, I attached small D-rings, which will lie flat along the back side of the frame. I hope you got lots of inspiration from today's projects. And I hope you'll let me know which one was your favorite. And if you'd like to see even more thrift flips like these, here's another video I think you'll like. Thank you so much for watching today.